asking, why work towards an NPM certificate? Well, uh, it provides a set of standards that can help shape the various aspects of formation, in this case, canter formation, uh, regardless of a, a person's background or experience or skill level. And it's a way of affirming a canter's mastery of, of the, uh, the core knowledge and skills that are part of, of the ministry, as well as the spiritual uh, mindset and commitment to the ministry. Another question that we get asked a lot is, do you have to be an NPM member to earn a certificate? Does anyone want to want to answer this one? Uh, so yes, you do have to be um, a, a member in good standing with NPM. And also on the organist side with the dual certification certifications, you have to also be a member in good standing with the AGO organization. Who are the certificate programs aimed at? Meaning, do you have to be a certain age or experience level to attain one? I, it might be a little different for all three of these. I know with pianists, uh, we don't necessarily have a minimum age, but you should be able to play the instrument well enough to meet the standards of the basic certification. That's probably the best way to do it. Uh, we have had youth um, that have come through, you know, college age students, very, very popular. Um, but we have a lot of high schoolers who play for their churches as well. And this is a good way to give them something to aim for, to something to work for, you know, it gives them a purpose to hone their skills and maybe a little direction in what they're doing. So my last question for the, the good of the group before we break into a little bit more information is how do I find help while preparing for any of the certificate exams? Cantor certificates, we have a certificate administrator for each of the three levels of certification, and they are available. Uh, they reach out to, to applicants and they're available every step of the way. And for the Cantor colleague level, there's also a separate mentor assigned to help applicants prepare for the colleague liturgy exam. So for the organ side, uh, materials um, are available on the NPM website um, to go to the AGO website where you will find the requirements for the AGO section. Um, the American Guild of Organists also provides materials that you can order from them. They're online also to help um, you prepare for the exams. Um, and same with the colleague exam, uh, since it's the same exam, liturgy exam that the cantors take, you are assigned a mentor to, uh, to prepare yourself for that liturgical exam. And I also would encourage people to reach out to their teachers and to those that have experience in, um, in, in certification and you know, someone that, that is, can help you to prepare for that in, in lesson time and practice time. So I encourage that also. With the piano, we uh, being the most recent of the three certifications, uh, we are not set up yet to have specific mentors assigned to people. But what Kristen just said was, was absolutely true for pianists as well. We encourage you to reach out to the community, reach out within your archdiocese or diocese and to whatever other musicians are there that might be able to help you, especially if it's an NPM member who's gone through certification already or um, you know, veteran liturgical musicians that have been doing this a long time and might have some insight and some, some ways to help you. We strongly encourage that, of course. Gail and I are going to speak about the Cantor certificates. So Gail, let's start from the beginning. Can you take a couple of minutes and explain the different levels of Cantor certification? Sure. There are three levels, basic, the BCC, intermediate, the ICC, and Cantor colleague certificate, the CCC. And each one has a, a vocal, a written, and a spiritual component. Everybody starts with the BCC and then has the option, once they've completed that, to continue on to the ICC and the CCC if they wish. But if they prefer just to complete the, the basic certificate, that's, that's just fine too. It all depends on their needs and their, their preferences. Um, the vocal component includes some psalms and some service music and some kind of sight singing or, uh, or pitch matching. And the complexity of each of those components rises as you go from BCC to ICC to CCT, CCC. The details are all spelled out in the study guides that are on the website. And Amanda, I know you'll be giving that information on, on where to locate things on the website. Um, so just as an example, the, for the BCC, it includes one chant psalm and one melodic psalm. 
a, a setting of the Kyrie and the Lamb of God, a pitch matching exercise, two short multiple choice tests addressing basic, uh, very basic music theory, and some basic concepts from Sing to the Lord and the parts of the Mass. There's a short written reflection in which the cantor um, discusses or writes about his or her way of preparing to proclaim the psalm. Now, at the other levels, though, those expectations will go up a little bit. There are, there are essays to do at the ICC level. Um, there, the musical repertoire is a little more challenging. And at the CCC level, again, the, the music repertoire is more challenging. And there is the, um, along with the written theory tests and so on, there is the um, colleague liturgy exam. Um, often the cantors who decide to pursue the cantor colleague certificate play some sort of leadership role in their ministry or in their parish. Uh, any cantor who's completed the BCC and the ICC is eligible to apply for the CCC. So to, to take a second on that, what you're saying is I can't jump to the colleague right away, correct? Correct, correct. And, and that's largely because of the the developmental and the spiritual component. You know, it, there's a lot more to it than being, you might already be an expert singer, a really good singer, but perhaps not as developed in the scriptural and liturgical and spiritual components uh, and knowledge of the Psalms and so on. And so there's an opportunity for everybody to complete that step before moving on. Can you take an extra second here as well and just give a brief idea of that colleague liturgy test exam that you just spoke of? It is given tw twice a year. All the other parts of, of earning a certificate can be completed throughout the year. Uh, since the process is virtual, you can schedule it at your convenience. The colleague exam, however, is only given twice a year. It's given in June and in January, I believe. And it involves um, applying a lot of knowledge from some key documents, some key liturgical documents. Uh, and you actually have to put yourself in the role of, of planning a liturgy and discuss what parts of, of for example, uh, a certain portion of the mass should be sung and what some choices might be and how does that play in with the liturgical season of the year and those types of things. That's an open book test, but you have to spend a good bit of time preparing so that you know where in those documents to quickly find what you need. And so it involves writing practice essays and getting feedback from a mentor. Um, it, it's a very, it, it's a wonderful learning experience. Gail, how many months in advance should I begin preparing for any of these Cantor certificates? Well, everybody has a year from the date of application. Um, to complete the certificate. And um, I would say, depending on your habits and preferences for, for vocal practice and for, for studying uh, for the written multiple choice test, I would suggest allowing maybe four to eight weeks from the time you apply for the BCC. Um, that same time frame is reasonable for the ICC, except that there's also an essay component to the ICC that involves writing about the ministry and spirituality of the cantor and the role of the Psalms in, in all of this. And that you have two months from the time of application to complete those. So some cantors like to do that before their vocal adjudication and some do it afterwards. So you have to figure out that, you know, you'll have those extra two months to, to be able to write those essays. The um, cantor colleague exam, because of the nature of the, the, the colleague liturgy exam, it's a longer process. Um, and I, so I would say you would need to anticipate at least, a, at least a six month period to allow for time to have your vocal adjudication and spend time preparing, writing practice essays, uh, uh, being assigned a mentor and working with that mentor before it's time to take the, the colleague exam. Other than the overall amount of time that it, um, you know, how many months in advance I should begin preparing, how many hours per week of preparation should I anticipate? Yeah, that again depends on the person and, and the level. Um, for the, the BCC, uh, and it depends too on your access to an accompanist for practicing the music, but for the BCC, you might want to spend a couple of hours a week on vocal practice and on practicing um, or on studying the, uh, for the written test. Uh, if you are already well-versed in music theory, in basic music theory, you might not need to spend a whole lot of time on that. 
if you're already very knowledgeable about all of Sing to the Lord, uh, you might not have to spend a lot of time. But if you're not, you would you would want to spend some time on that. But a couple of hours a week really would be plenty. Uh, the ICC candidate would want to spend additional practice time just because there's more music to prepare and also additional um, study time because that written test involves Sing to the Lord and the Germ. And the, and the essays are kind of like writing a paper for a course. They, you wouldn't want to try to knock it out in one sitting, the essays in one sitting. So you'd want to allow, uh, that's why we allow up to two months to do that, to give you a chance to read and, and take your time. Um, the CCC candidate would a schedule like that would work for them as well, but you'd want to allow some time really every week <laughs> um, to be going through the documents, to be highlighting, annotating, putting post-it notes in and writing some practice essays, which, which you have access to. So, um, so that would be, I spent lots of hours <laughs> for that, um, mostly practicing for the, for the big liturgy exam but I, I had a lot of support and a lot of resources to do it. So once I've done all of the preparation, how do I submit an exam audition? Okay. Um, for the last two years, we've been doing it entirely virtually, the um, adjudications, and it has been wildly successful. Um, it has worked really, really well. The cantor records the vocal adjudication in his or her parish with the accompanist there and uh, sends it to the certificate administrator in an agreed upon format. And the music director or whoever is in charge there at the parish can serve as the proctor for the written test. And then the proctor sends those tests back to the certificate administrator. Um, they send it, the, the, the recording in an agreed upon format, such as a, a YouTube video. That seems to be a popular option with the cantors. They, they like to use YouTube links to YouTube videos, but the certificate administrator would work with you to accommodate whatever method works best for you. And then you have a follow-up Zoom meeting with the adjudicators, a private Zoom meeting to share the feedback. And this is different too than years past because before the pandemic, if I might be so bold as to say this, you didn't really offer that. If I remember correctly, it was really primarily at the convention that we had a lot of cancer certificates come through. Is that correct? We did have the option of recorded uh, adjudications, but you didn't get the same uh, personalized feedback on Zoom with, with the whole group of adjudicators. You, you pretty much got your score sheet in the, in the mail, and that, that was really all the feedback you got. Uh, and yes, we did have them at the conventions or occasionally held regional adjudications. The downside to that is that it, you know, you're in the moment, probably nervous with an accompanist you've never met before in front of people you don't know in a setting you don't know. And the people are scheduled back to back to back. And so you, you do your adjudication, um, you get a few seconds worth of feedback and they're on to the next person. And it just didn't lend itself to a, a positive experience. So, um, and this, the virtual can be done any time of the year. If you do your recording and you watch it and you say, ah, I'm not happy with that, you can record it over again before you send it. So um, it's just, it's been great. We've gotten wonderful feedback. As I, as I wrap up, I wanna share my screen one more time so that I can walk you through as you watch this video, where to find more information about all the certificate programs that we just spoke about. They are all available on the NPM website and I will share my screen just one more time. From here, from npm.org, you go down to the formation area and then choose certificates. From here, you will find the information for cantors, pianos, and organ certificates. And they will be all right here in their respective tabs in terms of study guides, as Gail mentioned, for the cantor certificates, rubrics, as Bill mentioned, and repertoire suggestions for piano, and then information about all three levels, including the AGO information that Kristen mentioned for organ certificates. If you need any support as you begin to work towards a certificate, contact information for support is in there as well.